in the blue. He is for Psystorm. He's been looking a little bit better than I think people would have expected. He's Namshar. And in the bottom left, still looking like, of course, one of the best Protosses in the North American region from Alpha X. He is Max Angel himself. It's Astrea. And really what this was, Titan, we know people like the intro music, so we took the time to uh, make sure that they could listen to it twice. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Listen, we all like some intro music. It gets your blood pumping, gets you ready. So two of it never hurts. Um, as we did see the early pool come down from Namshar, this is, again, most likely going to just be defensive. Uh, the gas is being mined, though, alongside it. So that speed will eventually be a follow-up. Estrella has scattered this all out, has gone for that Cybernet Core before the Nexus. Or actually, no, it did go Nexus before Cyber Core, but it's getting the uh, Zealot to fill out this wall just to make sure that when these links do come across the map, there's going to be no threat of them getting into the main. And look at that. You know, Bayo, we've had so many PVZs today, but have we seen an early Roach Warren yet in a PVZ? I I can't remember the last time I saw a early Roach Warren in a PVZ in general. Dark likes his early shenanigans. He will go and proxy hatch or something, but even we don't even see this one from him because it feels like uh, this early Roach push has almost been figured out stargate openers just say no and astrea i mean look what we got here it, it is a stargate opener so as long as he's able to figure out what hap what's happening he's gonna know that he needs to get a void array instead of an oracle and from that perspective what really do you expect to get done here in amshar if there's a void array out on the map the roaches will not be able to bust through and then it doesn't look all that great for our Psy storm player but on the flip side if Astray is not able to figure this out and he goes straight Oracle, Oracles can be good, but they run out of energy. And then the Roaches mm -hmm. are able to punch through and then things become a little bit problematic for the Protoss player. Yeah, but as we see the uh, Zealot here, did get caught out. Doesn't matter though, the Zealot is pretty good at dealing with Lings. The cancel goes down onto the building. And we're gonna see that Astraea just gonna retreat his Adepts. And it does seem like he has a pretty good idea of what's going on as shield batteries are coming down and it's the Void Ray. Sure, it does take longer to build, but it's still a perfectly good tool for dealing with these roaches. And that just means that Estrella pretty much just has to last long enough, scouts out the timing with the Adept Shades. And so far, this is exactly how you want to start out the hold as a Protoss player. I really do like the addition here of the second pylon as well. It means that you have like a two-tier choke system in this natural. Oh. And it also means that you're not going to have your buildings depowered by losing a single pylon. So... It's serving double duty. It's working out pretty well here for Estrella. And it is, as you said, it's just buying time because the Voidray is out now. And yeah, sure, a lot of these roaches are not roaches anymore. Voidrays don't kill Ravagers nearly as quickly as they kill those Roachy boys. But it takes a while now for this pylon to go through. Oh. And Estrella with the rewall says, yeah, no, okay, cool. You killed my pylon. That's fine. Actually, nothing gets depowered. I'm totally fine here. We will see the Cyber Core eventually go down. And I don't think Estrella canceled that one. Oh, wait a minute here. He canceled some other things because he did not expect the links to come flooding in so that is an open wall and things they're getting a little bit more complicated for max angel at this point link's gonna try to knock down the static defense do what they can to get on top of these adepts as well but there's a second void right here and eventually it will be able to clean oh. all this stuff up the question and there we go hot warp oh. in on the wall that's it actually astrea he takes game one yeah, it was a clean hold there. The probe pull just in time. And then the Void Rays obviously being able to back it up. And Astrea being able to buy so much time there with the rewalling. I think that is a skill that a lot of Protoss players don't un underestimate how useful it is. We've seen Neeb legitimately practice that skill. Back when he was dominating, he would practice his rewalling skills just for rushes like that. And you see how useful it can be. Astrea knowing the angles, knowing the build paths and... Yeah, just completely able to shut that down. It really didn't feel like Namshar. I mean, maybe the Lings getting in was a bit dangerous, but other than that, didn't feel like there was really a shot of it working. Yeah, I mean, and again, you talk about the ability to roll, wall or rewall. Sally still seashells by the seashore, but the ability to roll, wall or rewall. Man, we're, just, we're not going to try it. it it's, <laughs> it's a tongue twister. That cool double, that double layer wall that Estrella did really was the difference, or at least helped make the difference between victory and defeat in that game. But 
we're going to move on to Hardwire for our second map, Titan. And I don't know. We saw Namshart look really good, at least the series that I saw against Trigger. It looked fairly good in just kind of your standard mid-game macro. Mm. I hope we see something like that. But also, it may just be that Estrella is so strong in these mid and late game scenarios that Namshar, even if he feels good in that matchup in general, he doesn't feel good in that matchup against, say, actually Estrella. Yeah. I mean, that could absolutely be a case. His PVC, I'm not sure what form it is in right now, but we are on to Hardwire for map number two. It was a very quick game one. We'll see if that's going to be the same case here in map number two. Well, we're going to have to find out because in the upper right... In the blue, he's down one now for Psy Storm, folks. He needs your energy. He's Namshar. And in the bottom left for Alpha X, already up 1-0, just showing some impeccable rewalling skills and danger assessment. It is Astrea. Well, nothing too crazy to start here from Namshar, and I mean, part of it is part of it is the fact that this is Hardwire, and uh, th that Roach Rush that Roach Rush may work on 2,000 atmospheres. When you add five six seconds to the rush timing, doesn't really work out all that nearly as well. Yeah, it's it really is a map dependent build where you have to make sure that it's a map that is or short enough for your roaches to get across in time, where maybe the Void Ray won't be out in order to. Defend against it if your opponent isn't on top, excuse me, of their opening. But other than that, this should be a pretty standard game as a fall. Cybernetic score coming down here for Estrella has the Nexus first. And I think really the interesting part about that last game is it was a Nexus first still. Um, after the gateway from Estrella still manages to hold on perfectly fine. I think it just, I mean, it just shows Estrella. I think especially recently it started to come back into form and really he knows how to hold these early aggressions. I don't know. May maybe Estrella, he goes for an, a Glaive Adept timing or something like that. So you open Twilight. You you don't have that Stargate there. Or maybe that's what Amishar was hoping for. Maybe that was what was in his prep from Estrella on that map. But, I mean, realistically, Titan, that was a build that Amishar went for that is almost hard countered by a, a standard Protoss opener. So, uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to see. Maybe there was something that Namshar saw Namshar saw in his practice and his preparation that said that maybe Australia was gonna be weak to that one, or maybe this was almost a gimme map. Now you never want to lose a map at a P in a best of three. Certainly not against a player like Australia, but if you're trying to set up ideas in your opponent's head, now you're trying to play the next level mind games, maybe it makes sense to hit him with a roach timing, even if you don't think it's gonna work out all that well, because it sets up the rest of your series in a more favorable way. Hmm. Yeah, and I think there is some aspect of it to that, where you start out with the rush, and if it works, you know, that's really great. You're going to get a good start, early start off the game. Your opponent, they have to play very, very safe from then on out. But in this case where it fails, I don't think Estrella has any qualms about heading into a standard macro game and feeling like he's not going to be at an advantage. And yeah, well, we're going to have to find out. So Oracle's on the way for Estrella right now. He's got one... Actually, yeah, one out on the map in just a second. The question we ask ourselves now, though, is whether Estrella looks to move into, well, the heavy Oracle play. And okay, for now, it's going to be Oracle into Void Ray. Now, Titan, Estrella has always been one of these Skytoss players in PvZ, even when it wasn't the meta. We saw him going these big, heavy Void Ray styles uh, back on Golden Wall before the, Void Ray before the Void Ray buff really happened in earnest, and certainly before the nerf. So this has just been always one of his preferred playstyles. We're going to have to see if that's what he wants to go for. Uh, but for now, we're going to see the Oracle look to dive on and not even try to kill workers, just stasising one of them. And, well, we're at the earliest, we're at the early point in the game where Namshar is going to be paying attention to this. It's not like he's going to be looking at 10 other places. Oh. So it's going to get, what, one unit? But okay, there we go. Twilight Council, Forge on the way. It's going to be something that's not Mass Voids. Yep, and it's that... It's that early Nexus that a lot of Protoss players love to go for when they know that it's going to be a standard game. Yeah, I mean, you have it pretty much at four minutes or sub four minutes as Oracle is going to dive on in here. Going to be able to find two, three drone kills. And hey, 
that's pretty worthwhile. You take a lot of damage, but for just the singular Oracle, you're going to be pretty happy with the value that you've gotten out of it so far. And now the Void Ray is just going to patrol and try and catch out any Overlords that it can. It does have that one at the edge of Namshar's main, but I don't know if he's going to head all the way over there. He's going to try, and there we go. Knock it down. But the plus one on the way robotics facility also going to be started, and Roach Warren finishing up for Namshar means that both these players so far looking at a very, very standard progression, but the charge is going to mix things up a little bit here for Estrella. Hmm, interesting. There has been a build, and uh, we mentioned it back in Europe, where you, you go voids, quote-unquote, and this is a single void, single oracle, so it's not quite the same. But you go Void Rays, and then you get Quick Charge, you get a Quick Templar Archives, and you hit with two Archons, tons and tons of Charge Lots, and you make that happen. But again, that's not the build that we're seeing right now, because there he is on six gas. But Namshar, he doesn't want the game to get there. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's got five Queens, he's got more. We're seeing a rather old style. We got, uh, some, we got a form of a German taxi happening here. Hopefully Namshar is aware of the patch notes that say that Queens cannot transfuse off of Creep. I gotta imagine he is, but I mean... Remember what happened with DRG back in the GSL? It's <laughs> not guaranteed, apparently. Uh, but here comes the pressure from Namshar. His queens are flying across the map. Roach's lings waddling. And we're going to have to see whether Estrella is prepared. Because charge is done in about 30 seconds. It's not ready yet. War Prism not out yet. The gateway's not out just yet. In fact, the Voidery is going to get recalled. But here come... They're actually here a little early. This is interesting. There's not a lot of ground army on the ground just yet. But they're going to get on top of this Archon before it is ready. Whoa. Oh, he's going to keep it alive for now, but there are no shield batteries at the third base. This is absolutely caught uh, a straight off guard Titan. It, oh, this is feeling gone. scary. Yeah, I mean, you have the creep being dropped in now, so you have those transfuses available. The Void Ray is going to go down. And Estrella, you went for this greedy third, but you just didn't have any ground units to help protect it. He even recalled back the Void Ray. The cannon is going to go up, but that's not going to matter. The shield battery is not going to be allowed to go up, and Estrella is just going to evacuate the third. There's no way he's going to be able to hold on. Archon's trying to hold this front. One of them is already going to go down. There are, I mean, there's a singular Immortal, but that's coming from the main base, I think. Actually, where is that Immortal? There we go. Finally, is here. And this is already disastrous for Estrella. That it is. 80 army supply to 30 here. Estrella just caught caught in transition caught not prepared whatsoever so what he's got two archons he's got an immortal you talked i mean those are good units defensively they're incredible uh, but there are five queens that means this damage will not stick on this army for the most part now we're seeing the cyber core go down so no more stalkers not that he really had any tech to go with those stalkers anyways and namshar seems content with this he's walking his queens back home he says okay well you know i don't know that i can punch through there necessarily i'm just going to keep you contained for now and in the meantime, double Evo on the way, bailing nest, additional queens, additional drones, a fourth base, everything that a young Zerg could want in this game to make sure that they are happy. Absolutely, the Archons are being healed back up. Three of them now available. One actually trapped behind this pylon, so Estrella not gonna have access to that DPS. He is working on four Immortals, which is gonna be a very, very strong army. The issue is behind this, it's a fourth base for Namshar. It's plus one, plus one. It's a macro hatchery also being placed down. Namshar is just going to get into a massive Zerg economy. You try and break on out, but there is the Zerg to collapse onto you. The shield battery overcharge is not going to be able to save everything from that massive DPS of the corrosive vials. And Namshar, a perfectly selected build order and read on what Estrella wanted to do in this game. Titan, I'm feeling sick because that was some massive bile dropping down on Estrella's head. He gets two Immortals there. Yeah, you get one or two out because you could hot pick him up, but it really does not make a difference here. The Robo getting targeted down. Estrella, he's trying to hold, and honestly, the only reason that this fight looks close is because Namshar has not been building army units for a while. He's been building drones. He's up on 84 workers. He has all those upgrades. The moment he decides to open the floodgates once again, it's going to be the moment that Estrella dies but we have seen some crazy pvz comebacks arston versus hate me drogo almost versus lambo so i'm not going to count him out but he has to climb like two everest to get out of this hole yeah as there we go corrosive biles are going to knock down the rest of the production i mean astray it's going to be your last to jeffer but more units are rallying across the map it's just the immortals and they're dodging biles very nicely and there is a full health Archon that is here, but as soon as the Lings are going to join on in, this gets a whole lot harder. The Biles now hitting with their targets, and the rest of the units here to collapse. Estrella 
He's going to drop this game. Namshar, extremely well done. Shield battery overcharge is going to try its hardest, but it is not E. No, this is just barely enough, but there's more. There's more where that <laughs> came from. 26 more lings in production. Spire, Namshar, making sure not to let up. 2-2 two, two already started. Centrifuge hooks, and the Zerg is taking a fifth base. I mean, hear me out. Maybe if there are, like, six disruptors and Astraea manages to explode the entirety of Namshar's army before Namshar gets to Spire and Broodlords or... Uh, which is the timing that we're looking at right now, or Mutas, or whatever it is he decides to build. Maybe there's a chance. But it is the slimmest of margins. It is the slimmest of opportunities for Astraeus. He runs, what are those, a couple charge lots onto the other side of the map now, uh, trying to find something, and Amshar is going to fan out everywhere. He says, okay, look, if I, if I let you get DTs or a lot of charge lots or something in, maybe some type of base, kill off a lot of workers... Maybe that's your way back into this game. And one thing we do need to point out here, Titan, Estrella lost that base. He didn't lose a lot of workers and he was constantly probing. So he's still on 63 workers. The moment that he is able to go and actually mine out of this third base, his economy is going to do a pretty fantastic job of recovering. But I'm just worried about the next level of the tech. The Spire, probably the Greater Spire, Broodlords. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this army does not fight Broods. Yeah, and it's a, it's already a maxed out Zerg at 11 minutes. Namshar has not skipped a beat with this build. And I mean, this is the cleanest play that I think I have seen from Namshar so far on this map as the Zealots trying their best, but just two spine crawlers built. Namshar says, I don't want to deal with that. Get that out of here. And he's going to try and look for an angle to collapse on in here. I mean, he has two armies. This, this looks close already. That's just one half of it. The other half is on the other side of the base and... Uh oh, Estrella, are you going to be ready? And I don't know if you're going to be able to hold. Oh! I mean, that's going to be a massive disruptor shot. It's a lot of the supply out of the way, but there's still just so much more. Self detonate on the Banes doesn't even matter, as everything is just going to be ripped to shreds. And Namshar, what a game from him. The counterattack doing some work, but unfortunately, it's not enough. Two shreds, you say? I mean, for a second there, that, that disruptor shot, if the rest of the army had been in a better position to benefit from static defense, that almost did win Estrella that fight, but he had Archon just fully surrounded and not work out. Uh, and Titan, I got a feel for you, man. It felt like you had the, oh, the game was about to end like three times in that game. <laughs> ah, well, there's nothing much going here. Estrella holds for another two minutes. Oh, well, there's nothing more going here. You love to see it. I love to see it. Uh, it happens to all of us. Estrella was being tenacious there, trying to hold on, but I just don't think he realized how well Namshar had transitioned out of that pressure. And now we're on to Glittering Ashes. And again, this is a map that uh, a lot of Zergs are letting through. And it's one that is not the best for them. Of course, in the late game, you know, everything's up for grabs, but it's very hard to punish the Protoss on this map. So. We're going to see if Damshard tries to go for another cheeky build. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting. Uh, Glittering Ashes, as you said, it's a bigger map. Uh, but, I mean, realistically, on the scale of cheeky builds, what Damshard did was not the cheekiest. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a build that we've seen for a while, and it's something that maybe Astraea was not expecting because it feels like it's fallen out of favor. It's not quite as good. Uh, and even when we were seeing Voidray openers, we weren't seeing that style of queen drops or, you know, German taxis because it just didn't feel quite as strong as just walking the queens across the map. It was a little slower. But now we're going to move on to game three, Glittering Ashes. I don't know, man. I'd love to see Proxy Hatch. Dark has been stomping Protoss with it. We're going to have to see maybe maybe Namshar can do the same. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Namshar has been taking notes on different cheesy ways to try and beat Protoss. I would honestly, I would love to see a proxy hatch. I haven't seen one in a while. I, I miss it. I feel like that's something that no one else is ever going to say in the history of StarCraft, but there you go. Hey, you know what? As a fan, maybe we miss it. As, as players, maybe, maybe less so. Anyways, folks, game number three is here. In the bottom left. In the red, he took game one, but that that push kind of knocked him over game two. His name is Estrella. And in the top right, managing to get one back. 
Ladies and gentlemen from Science Storm Gaming here. He still has a shot in this series to take one off the man who is so far undefeated, and that's going to be another early pool. It's Namshar. Makes perfect sense. I mean, Astura is going to scout this out, so I don't know how much she's going to be able to get done here. I think, and I can't imagine this is going to be a Roach Rush either. I mean, mm -hmm. Astrea, with as early as this kill as this is, it's got, this has got to be some sort of middle committal build from a name shark. Was that, a, I, I didn't see, was that like, a, was it a 12 pool or was it like a 15 pool? Uh, it was 15. Okay, so that's a bit more interesting. Uh, I mean, a 12 pool is a macro opener, um, but... Yeah, you know, this this one is a little bit more. I, I'm not kidding. Twelve pool is a macro opener against Protoss. Yeah, but we're gonna have to see what exactly Namshire has in store for us in this game, because I don't know. I maybe he's worried about a cannon rush, but fifteen pool is not even really necessarily the best thing against cannon rushes, depending on what it is. Yeah, we'll have to see what the plan is. Still mining gas here, so imagine it would be speed if the. Zergling speed is not going to be the option. Then, of course, the layer is the next on the docket. And we'll see as it goes up to 100. There we go. Metabolic boost started up. So, doesn't look like it's going to be anything too, too crazy. So, we're not going to see the layer. We're not going to see roaches. Which I think is good, especially after how Estrella handled it in game number one. You probably don't want to run that back. And the full wall is going to be completed here. Just so that these lings are not going to be able to make their way on through. Uh, yep. So, there's the full wall. Version one of the hold for a straight is done, but honestly, I mean, Namshar, he made, what, four lings? Uh, <laughs> he's not anticipating getting too much done with this, but it is uh, nice, maybe minor pressure on the map. It means that if Straya moves out and doesn't keep anything in the wall, maybe lings find their way in, get a good scout off. But behind this, Namshar, third base on the way. He's not really doing too much with this. Now, maybe he does something more if Astrea doesn't scout it, but what Protoss in this day and age does not send a probe scout out? Because, of course, you want to block the natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. As Stargate is going to be finishing up, and this adept actually going to complete the shade and can, of course, fight these two lings with no problem. The issue is going to be the queens that are going to follow. So just going to try and find some drone kills and then get on out. Doesn't manage to get the first one. A very good transformation. The adept will find its way on out. His name is going to go for the scout, and it's going to be a void ray first here from Estrella. Once again, just to clean up these overlords, or at least the one that is across the map, the sacrificial OV. And then we'll see what the build is going to be off of that. Of course, Glittering Ashes in the past was one of those maps where you would end up going for two Stargate Void Ray and you would just macro into Sky Toss. Nowadays, much more popular on this map is the two Stargate Phoenix, um, if not just going straight into the ground play. Yeah, absolutely. So, there we go. Third base going to be on the way for Estrella. Actually, it is on the way right now. As you said, Void Ray into Phoenix. It is interesting that Estrella is one of these players that does still opt for the Void Ray. Uh, if you're going to take a hero or a creator as like the, the, the two gold standards that I'm kind of comparing everyone against right now in PvZ, we're not seeing lots of Void Rays out from them. 99 times out of 100, it is triple, actually triple Oracle, not even... Double Oracle, but Estrella, he's got one Oracle for her ass. He has a Void Ray on the other side of the map as well, but a little more sustained damage. And immediately into uh, uh, into the Twilight, immediately into the Forge. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Titan, but this was the same build that Estrella went for in game number two, correct? That I think it was only a single Oracle, single Void? Yeah. Yeah, exact same build, running it back. And we're going to see if it's going to be the charge once again uh, for that research. We saw that didn't really come in handy when you have queens and roaches um, across the map in your base. But there we go. Going to be the blink and plus one. So a much more standard follow-up here for Estrella. Ooh, Oracle gets slow, just has to pop the revelation and get on out. So he's going to keep tabs on where those queens are. But so far, this game three on Glittering Ashes both these players just giving full respect to each other and playing a standard macro game. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> There's certainly room for Namshar to go for the taxi once again, but his lair is too late for that, I think. Uh, I don't think we're going to see him go for that in this game. One of those, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Is Stasis Trap Namshar on top of things. Australia has been trying to go for this Stasis Trap instead of worker damage pretty much this entire series, and it really has not been all that successful for the man. The other thing, of course, we have to mention, and I don't think we have in this series, is the fact that Estrella is playing on negative ping. 
He is in Korea as of March 6th. He just qualified for the GSL. So Namshar is playing on local ping. He's playing on, you know, fairly decent, playing on probably US West. And Australia is playing at a little bit of a ping disadvantage. So that maybe does provide Namshar with some opportunities to maybe actually get an even serious upset, uh, which we may not otherwise expect. But Namshar, he is playing differently in this game, of course. It is going to be plus one melee. It is going to be mutas on the docket for our Canadian Zerg. Yeah. Also going for the double expansion. So Namshar going to be completely getting into this, I mean, just macro play. Um, and this is going to be a walk across the map here for Australia with a few units. Of course, he's currently sitting at 3-0, so the ping hasn't, you know, affected him that much. But when it comes to this micro, we'll see if there is going to be any issue. Spire almost done. Banelin Nest also on the way. And at the same time that Australia is walking across the map, so decided Namishar that he wanted to also try and find some damage. It's going to force the cancel on that fourth Nexus. And actually, actually might get a second cancel here. Australia has to be careful of the Ling's... Just gonna decide to get on out. Maybe try and run by into that third base. I really think he should have canceled that base the second time. But anyway, now Stalker's on the left side. Blink plus one are done. We're gonna see Namchar. He's gonna be forced to cancel fourth base number one. He had a fourth and fifth base coming up at the same time. Uh, but honestly, Namchar is gonna be okay with that because again, he does have a second fourth base on the way. Just about done. Ten Mutas joining the fray and Estrella. Hey, he can't build anything more right now. He finds himself supply blocked from losing those pylons and the fourth base or the building fourth base, and he doesn't really, I don't think he's aware of these mutas just yet, so they're going to be able to find their way onto the other side of the map, and we're going to have to see whether Estrella can make this push happen, because how many links do we have on the field right now? It is just about 30, not a lot to deal with these stalkers, and now, yeah, Namshar is going to have to pull the mutas back home, he needs them as a fighting force, and that is always kind of scary when you have mutas, in fact, he's kind of waffling oh. with them, so now onto the other side, uh, Estrella looking for the fight here, good force fields to wall off the, any sort of reinforcements from the natural, couple lings are fighting, Roche Warren is going to have to be remade because Estrella is killing it, and it seems like Namshar is going to go for a base trade, but Estrella has first mover's advantage. Yeah, I mean, the, the indecision there with the Mutalisks always is going to hurt as Namshar, as Estrella has split this wonderfully, the Roaches are all going to be dealt with, the link count is, is non-existent, as now it's going to be down to killing these drones and the extra bases, the Zealots doing such a good job of soaking up damage from the Lings, and this, I mean, look at this, the Mutalisks are trying to dive on in, but the Blink Stalkers and the Shield Battery Overcharge is going to be enough.